flower growers year, month by month. It's a summary of the year, so you will kind of get a little picture in your head of what the year might look like instead of a big gray cloud of unknowing. The intensity of each of our workloads will vary and our schedules will vary, but there's always a lot happening throughout the year and always something to do and so much behind the scenes that happens before you even get to the growers market. So January is the enthusiasm month. It's the month when all the seed catalogs are arriving and you might be making lists of all, everything you're going to order. You might be reviewing your notebooks for what grew well for you, what didn't, what you forgot to grow, what you don't want to forget, what was most profitable. And it's about getting all those orders in before things are sold out. Whatever's most popular will sell out fast. In February, you can get your orders together for supplies. Supplies like irrigation, any tools you might need, bouquet sleeves, anything like that. You can either get that ordered in February or make plans to get it ordered by putting it on your schedule or on your calendar and ensuring that you won't forget. In March, there's more sun. The days are getting longer. You'll be planting seeds and more seeds. You'll be harvesting tulips. April! You're going to just be getting really busy in April. Things are going to just start clicking. May is the month of Mother's Day, and your biggest sales may come on Mother's Day weekend. It's going to take all your flowers and all your energy. You need planting and weeding and ordering for the next year. June is wedding month and florists are going to want everything you can pick. So busy, busy. By now, everything you planted in May is going to need water and to be weeded. You're also going to want to be flipping out your spring bulb beds for anemones and ranunculus and tulips and converting them into beds for warm, loving, heat loving annuals. July is your most abundant month and your flowers are at their peak. The thing is, is most of your customers may be on vacation, so you have all these flowers and maybe not enough people to be buying them. Okay, August is a really busy month. Your sales are going to be picking up. It's going to be really hot, but this can be your highest income month. September, so things are cooling down, things are slowing down a bit. You're not so rushed. October, this is the month that we should be getting our first frost. Finally, feel like we're in the home stretch for the year, and there's no planting to do this month. You may be heartsick over the arrival of the frost that has just come and taken your last of your beautiful dahlias and your flowers have turned black. Income goes away, but things are slower. November, you're going to be planting tulips again. And finally, you're going to be feeling like you're all caught up. In December, if you haven't done so in November, you'll be closing up your flower beds and fields for the year, putting everything away, getting things cleaned up and ready to go for the next year. So when you start, things will be in the best condition they can be. You might be making Christmas wreaths and garlands to bring in funds for that time of the year, but it's also important to take time to rest. Hopefully this little summary has helped you see what it might look like in a year of growing flowers to sell.
Thanks for listening. Please subscribe.